Hey there, and welcome back to Sleep M. If you're new to my channel, my name is Emily, and I had the gastric sleeve procedure on January 9th of 2018. It is a bariatric weight loss proce procedure, and today I'm excited to announce it is exactly five months since my surgery. Um, you'll be seeing this tomorrow, which will be five months in one day, but I am five months out, and honestly, I could not be feeling better. I am so happy I had this procedure. So if you haven't had the procedure yet and you're deciding if you should do it or not or if that surgery is for you, um, I really don't feel like there's any way to know for sure if it's the right or wrong choice. I really feel like you have to dig deep inside yourself and if you are wanting to lose weight and you want to live a healthier lifestyle, then do it. I personally do not believe that you could lose this amount of weight with just diet and exercise alone. I have had some patients that have done it and I think they are miracles because I would struggle, I, well I did, I struggled so much with every diet I've ever done in my life. I have tried a lot of diets, I have failed them all. And this is not a diet, this is a lifestyle change. I feel like a completely new person. I feel like a different person and I'm just so happy I did it. I wish, my only regret of course, is that I probably should have done it 10 years sooner. Um, being that I'm five months out, um, the first six months after the procedure, they call it the honeymoon phase where basically they say you're gonna lose weight regardless, but if you don't change your lifestyle choices um, and you continue your poor lifestyle choices, they will catch up to you eventually. Um, so I have really been focusing on weighing out my food. I really do not consume more than three to six ounces per meal. I have also been really diligent about not drinking any fluids or anything with a meal, which is super hard to do. It's honestly, I think, harder than making sure you don't overeat. Um, but I do find that if I do drink something with a meal, um, the food doesn't sit right and I feel full faster. And along with um, not drinking with a meal, I really focus in on not drinking for 45 to 60 minutes after my meal, which is really difficult. And then of course, getting in the amount of fluids that you need, um, I would say that now that I'm five months out, my stomach is considerably larger. Um, I can feel it, but I also know that having the three to six ounces of meat, like food, depending on how dense the food is, is still making me full, still satisfying me. Um, and so I'm really just gonna kind of continue at doing that. I have my six month follow up next month and I'll kind of see what they recommend and kind of go with that. But overall, I'm completely fine with just consuming that and it makes me feel a little bit of control that I weigh all my foods out the night before um, and have everything individually prepared in my fridge ready to go at any moment's notice. Um, I've also been experimenting a little bit more um, when we go out to eat. It's really has been kind of fun to figure out what foods I can eat. For instance, last night, we went to a Southwestern Grill. It's supposed to be kind of like Native American meets like Tex-Mex food. Um, and again, there was a lot of rice on there. It was a lot of tortillas. Um, but I was lucky enough to find the steak skewers um, and I ordered those. It was perfect. I have leftovers. And just finding those little things, there's actually no place that I've gone to that I have been completely stumped on what to get. For instance, we went to Olive Garden, which at Olive Garden, there's really only one thing on the menu. It is the salmon picante. It's a salmon picante, and then it has a side of zucchini. The zucchini does have some breadcrumbs on it, but it's really easy just to scrape those off. I am sick of it. We go there quite frequently to visit Daniel's father. Um, he likes to go there. He's a trucker, so he gets some lasagnas and then takes them on the road with him. He feels that it lasts, you know, it can stay in his fridge on the road. It's easy to eat a long time after. So he really likes going there. So he orders what he's going to eat that night. And then he orders a couple extra meals for the road. I was kind of sick of the same avocante 
And I just asked the waitress, I said, can I get the chicken and shrimp carbonara with no noodles? And she kind of laughed at first, like I was joking. And I was like, no, I really don't want noodles. I have not really wanted noodles um, for a while. And she said, well, would you prefer me to just put some vegetables in there? And she brought it out. It was amazing. It had like broccoli, peas, um, peppers, all like all sorts of good stuff in there. Um, and then of course that one meal lasted me five meals. I ate that that night. I got home. I divided it into four ounce portions when I got home into four different containers and it lasted me a while. I had it every day for lunch and I, I loved it. It was delicious. It was low carb. Um, and it was high protein and it was just what the, just what I needed. So I really am starting to feel a lot less discouraged. And I think one thing I wish I had known is I felt like before the procedure, I had so many food funerals where you're like, I'll never be able to eat you again. Um, and yeah, there are things that you don't eat again, but it's things that you just don't want to. Like, I just don't want to eat bread. And but I do crave vegetables and it's really weird because I know that they cut off the stomach and the whole thought process behind it is that you're going to have a smaller stomach so you won't be able to fill it with a lot of food. But your mind choices change. I really feel like there's something going on in your stomach that once they take out a majority of it, your mind changes and it's a wonderful thing. And so I'm really excited that I did this. And I also had my first drink of alcohol since I last saw you. I was really holding off on this for the six months, but I went to a friend who I never get to see's happy hour, and he kind of like laughed at me when I said I wasn't gonna drink anything. And then um, he just kind of talked me into it, and I had some wine, which, probably isn't the best choice does have some carbs in it but i was too chicken to have anything with hard alcohol because i just haven't had it and i thought if i were to have it i would get drunk so fast well i had the glass of wine it took me an hour to drink i just kind of sipped on it and i only had one glass of wine and i was fine um and then the, a few weekends later my belly dance tribe we call ourselves moonshine and we had our big performance that I talked about in that um, one video not too long ago. And um, it was really fun. But since we were called Moonshine, one of the ladies brought some moonshine. And of course, everybody had a drink before we went on stage, including myself. And it burned the whole way down. And I did feel a little tipsy afterward. In all honesty, it probably really helped with my stage fright. So... I got on stage, was feeling good. Afterwards, I had another little sip with the ladies to celebrate our performance, and it was fine. I Again, I think that there's not a lot of nutrients in alcohol. It's definitely not something I'm gonna be doing mass quantity, quantities of, and I really feel like alcohol for me, college years was a very gluttonous, um, binge drinking time, but lately, it's more of a cocktail I get with dinner or something like that. So I really don't like to drink with food and the hardest thing is I've learned with coffee. Coffee, I just, um, I try to have my coffee, cup of coffee done before I eat food if we're going out for breakfast or something like that. So really, I don't really foresee myself having that much alcohol, but knowing that I can and it's just okay and I'm going to make smart choices. Um, you know, the reason I had the glass of wine was because we were at a, a Mexican restaurant and I knew that the margarita was full of sugar and so I'm really going to try to make smart choices when it comes to alcohol. Um, as far as my exercise has been going, it's been going really well, except for this last week I thought I was catching a cold and I wasn't feeling good and so I was trying, I was actually staying home quite a bit um, and we didn't go out and exercise really. And then finally Thursday, I was, I told the doctor that I work for, I said, can you look in my ear? I swear I have an ear infection. And she looks in my ear and she goes, you don't have an ear infection. You just have horrible allergies. Um, the pine pollen is horrendous right now in Colorado. I'm completely stuffed up and my ears are full of fluid from the pine pollen. 
And so this weekend, Saturday, I went to my friend Shanti's, her yoga class out at Majestic Views Park, and it was beautiful. And I am going to get right back into exercise this week. I'm not going to allow my allergies to overtake my life. I am not sick, so um, I'm just going to do it. And I think that's the thing is you just got to keep pushing yourself. Um, you know, the person before this didn't really enjoy exercise that much. The person after the um, afterwards is starting to learn to enjoy exercise. So I really look forward to getting back to the gym, getting back to my belly dancing and things like that. So it should be lots of fun. But for the main event, what everybody is truly excited for are my statistics. So I started off on January 9th at 378 pounds and I weighed in this morning at 288.6, making my total loss 89.4 pounds. It's unbelievable, to be honest. I had this moment this week where I was like, gosh, I'm just gonna see where I'm at. And I do that periodically. I check throughout the month and make sure that I'm at least losing something. And I really get confused on weight because some weeks where I do really well with my diet, really well with my exercise, I don't lose anything. Sometimes I gain. And then other weeks where um, my brother-in-law came out recently and we went out for um, Cuban food and I had some ice cream, I lost four pounds. So it doesn't really make sense. And that's why I really just like to stick with the monthly weigh-ins because it doesn't make sense. And I can't give you a rhyme or reason to why my weight drops off the way it is, but I feel like overall it's dropping and I am definitely sticking to the diet that I was told to and I'm gonna continue to stick to it. Um, but this week I had this big deja vu moment where I woke up, I hadn't had my coffee, I thought, I'm just going to see where I'm at in the scale. I stepped on and I thought, oops, I forgot to zero it out before I stepped on. So I stepped off, zeroed it out, stepped back on, and it said 289. And I thought, oh my God, this isn't, this isn't an incorrect read. This is what my actual weight is. And it was just kind of shocking because I just haven't really seen these numbers probably since I was like high school, maybe freshman or sophomore year of college. I haven't been in the 200s. So it was just shocking to me. And I got to work and I was so excited that day. I was telling everybody, I had this one patient grab my face and she just was like, I just can't get over how skinny your face looks. And I was like, well, it's just gonna get skinnier. So stay tuned. and. It's just been really exciting and watching the number drop, I did not get to my 90 pounds, which was kind of my goal. But I, again, I'm only 0.4 pounds off. My surgeon says that he expects me to lose 100 pounds in the first six months and I really feel like I'm right on track. I have one more month and if I can do 10.4 pounds, I am there. And then I have lost 100 pounds in my honeymoon phase. So. Really, I am feeling great and I'm hoping to make that 100 pounds. I'm hoping to make everybody proud. And I feel like I'm right on track and I feel like I'm gonna do it. I actually am not scared at all. When he first said I was gonna lose 100 pounds in six months, I really thought he was joking. I thought that is impossible, but now that I'm in it, I see that it's possible. And deep down inside, I feel like I'm a long ways away from where I wanna be and it's crazy because when he first asked what my goal weight would be, I said 250. And he goes, oh no, you're going to get way less than that. He goes, you're going to get to like 180, 200. And I really feel like that is completely possible. And I really feel motivated to make that possible. So thank you, Dr. Snyder over at Rose Medical Center. I really appreciate the words of encouragement and I'm really going to do it. So without further ado, um, we're going to go to Daniel's favorite part of filming this video. We're going to do the side by sides. So my neck went from 17 inches the day of surgery down to 16 for a total loss of one inch so far. My bust went from 53 inches down to 46, which is a seven inches loss. My waist went from 54 to 45 inches, nine inches total lost. 
My hip went from 63 the day of surgery to 55.5 inches for a total loss of 7.5 pounds. My left arm went from 20.5 inches down to 19 for a total loss of 1.5 inches. My right arm went from 21 to 17 inches for a 4 inch loss. My left thigh went from 36 inches to 31 inches for a 5 inch loss. And my right thigh went from 35.5 inches to 31 today for a 4.5 loss. So my total loss in inches is 39.5, and that is three and a third feet. And I think in that video, you can really see it in the jeans. These are a size 28. I am now down to a size 22, I'm guessing. I actually have zero clothes to me that truly fit. I'm just going to make them work. I still have not bought anything new. We have been going to, to consignment stores with very little luck. Um, what I truly need are some scrub tops um, and I'm just not finding them. There are a lot of size mediums at these consignment stores. So if I ever get to size medium, I know that there are a ton there. Um, but overall, I am just really excited. I'm just, I don't really care if the clothes are baggy. It's kind of weird because I thought that would be one of the most exciting parts is finding new clothes and looking better in clothes. But really the most exciting part is feeling good, going on longer walks, not being afraid, not feeling afraid to like feel out of breath, being able to just enjoy life has really been my favorite part. And I really have to thank everybody that's been watching because it's been so much fun sharing my journey, hearing other people's stories. I love watching other people's videos. I also enjoy, you know, my family and friend that have been watching and getting the text messages after I send out a video about how shocked they were about something or about how they noticed the little changes in me. It's just what I am enjoying right now. I'm having a friend come out to visit in two weeks and I literally next week will just be going by so slow because I'm so excited for her to see me and to discuss the changes that I've been going through. Um, she's known me for a long time and it's been really interesting because people have been saying, I just noticed a lot of different things personality wise. You seem a lot more optimistic. You seem more energetic. You seem just ha to have a better outlook on life. And I just want to continue that. So I will see you guys next week with a new video. Till then. Bye.